Right, welcome back, everybody, for the uh, next Evolution of Sport talk. We have Mike Atanasio and Webb Horn. They're the co-founders of Adam Stats. So they'll be talking about that. So with that, I'd like to welcome Mike and Webb to the stage. Hey, I'm Mike Atanasio, and this is my partner, Webb Horn, in the front row. And we are the co-creators of Adam Stats which is a platform for fans and those interested in baseball and involved in baseball alike to get answers and uh, quick information and about any sort of statistic or situation that they have a hunch about, about any player or uh, situation. So everyone knows the Moneyball story um, about the smaller market A's who needed to use statistical analysis in order to field a competitive team to compete with the you know, larger market teams such as the Yankees. Um, and you know, who, who would have thought that there'd be an Academy Award nominated movie about baseball statistics? You know, this is obviously pretty cool stuff that people are interested in. Um, so the old world of stats, I like to categorize kind of as what I like to call these scorecard stats, uh, where you can basically just look up you know, batting average, home runs, RBIs, singles, doubles, and triples, um, you know, online. And if you were to look up stats online pre-Moneyball, uh, pre-Moneyball era, that's pretty much all you could find. Um, and the new world of statistics, which is post-Moneyball, um, categorized by that picture of Brad Pitt, um, is basically about, you know, fans and sabermetricians creating, you know, formulas such as fueling independent pitching, wins above replacement, and others like that to evaluate players and uh, to determine you know, players' values. Um, so it's really advanced kind of from this kind of, uh, uh, from, from a standpoint of, uh, of statistics uh, from batting average to you know, these advanced formulas. So if you were to look, if you were to try to find information about uh, sabermetrics, you'd go to kind of four main places. Um, on one hand, you have your ESPN.com and your MLB.com, which are really all about user friendliness. And on your other hand, you have you know, sites like Fangraphs and Baseball Reference, uh, which are way more advanced um, in terms of statistical data. Um, ESPN and MLB.com you know, have evolved to have more than just batting average and home runs and RBIs. Um, but still, they're a, a bit limited in you know, how they present advanced statistics. And uh, fan graphs and baseball reference, on the other hand, um, are a bit hard to navigate, and they have a few limits. Um, while they're great, great sites, I spend tons of my time, you know, tons, tons of time on those sites, and I wouldn't be standing up here without them. Um, there are a few limits that uh, are presented by their, uh, their interface. Um, it's pretty hard to navigate um, for the common fan. It contains reams of stats um, that are a bit, you know, confusing. And um, secondly, um, even for those who can navigate the site, they really, it, it doesn't really take that next step. And that's where Adam Stats comes in. So Adam Stats addresses sabermetrics in a user-friendly way and allows fans to apply their own insights and ideas and receive answers. Uh, we aggregate data, simplifying it for the basic fan who wants to know more. Uh, we fit right in between, you know, I like to think we fit right in between the MLB.coms and the fan graphs, where we're very user friendly and want to be very user friendly, and also contain kind of these advanced um, statistics for fans to learn about. Um, so, what we feel differentiates us from everyone else is that we really strive to empower the fan and give the fan the opportunity to find answers about anything that they're looking for. So, here's an example um, fans, you know, use sabermetrics to you know, set their fantasy lineups, and general managers use, you know, statistical data to set their rosters. But, for example, you know, who was the most valuable player last year? You know, that's a discussion that was brought up, you know, in the AL and the NL, and uh, data from fan graphs and other advanced sites were used uh, to discuss it. Um, so, in the American League, you have Justin Verlander, and he's a pitcher, and, you know, there's no real stat to compare batters and pitchers to each other, um, other than you know what I think maybe wins above replacement, um, although that is calculated differently for batters and pitchers. So there's no real apples to apples stat to compare the two. 
So what I thought I'd do as a fan was to try to shed some light on the NL MVP debate between Ryan Braun and Matt Kemp. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ryan Braun played for the NL Central champion Brewers, and Matt Kemp played for the Dodgers, who did not reach the postseason. Um, the general consensus was that Matt Kemp had better, a better statistical season than Ryan Braun, um, and you know Matt Kemp had a higher batting, uh, sorry, had uh, more home runs and more RBIs, while Ryan Braun had a higher batting average and had a higher slugging percentage. But as a fan, you know, I was genuinely interested in who was a better clutch hitter. Now, I couldn't find this online, so we thought we'd create something for the fan to find answers to questions like this. Um, I am from Los Angeles. I you know, love Kobe Bryant, much to the dismay of some people in the audience, maybe. Um, and he always comes through in the clutch. And in other sports, you know, people pay great attention to you know, who performs well when the game is on the line and you know, who comes through in the playoffs. And I thought, you know, that should have came into the discussion of the, in, in baseball, and it, it doesn't really. So this is what our platform's gonna do, and we'll show you a couple examples of what the site does. I'll bring up uh, Webb to show you kind of new stats that people haven't really seen about uh, the MVP debate. Okay, so first we'll switch over to a demo website that we built on top of our platform to give you guys an idea of some neat things that it can do. Here we go. Uh, so this is just a typical player page for Ryan Braun that has his basic stats for 2011. And the goal here is to compare him quickly and easily to Matt Kemp. So the first thing we can do is bring up this edit splits window, which gives us a lot of different options, um, a lot of different variables to condition on to analyze their performance. But the first thing we'll do is just look at Ryan Braun and Matt Kemp's overall performance in 2011. So here's, here's their basic performance. You can see that it's pretty similar in many of the stats. Uh, batting average is very close. Uh, Matt Kemp had more home runs, but very, very similar. Um, so now a, a natural question that a fan might ask when trying to look at clutch situations is how they performed in late innings. Uh, so that's, the, that's one of the first things we can apply. Um, so here you can select a range, range of innings And again, look at a comparison. And here they are. Here are their stats in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings. Um, and they're, they're still pretty similar. So there's different ways that you can define a clutch situation. Um, and one way might be to look at a score differential. So let's say you want to look at the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, and the game scores within two runs. So you could be down by two or up by two. Um, so that's another very simple, quick thing that you can do here. And you can see that the batting average between Ryan Braun and Matt Kemp has diverged quite a bit. Um, you can see the performance change. And to take it one step further, you can look at their uh, comparison in a tie game. So we'll, we'll do the exact same thing late, late in the game. Game's tied up. How does each of them perform? We're going to get a smaller sample size, uh, about 20 at-bats. 20 plate appearances for both of them, but the batting average really diverges greatly. You can see a huge performance gap between them in, the, in these late innings, and whether or not this is the best way to define a clutch situation is really up to the fan, but the goal of this is just for anybody who's interested to very quickly go on to the site and apply whatever situation they think is interesting and get answers fast to do their own investigations. Uh, please switch back. So, you know, like we're saying, this isn't, you know, we're not saying that Ryan Braun is a better player than Matt Kemp. You know, just as a fan, we think it's really interesting that Ryan Braun was a much better clutch hitter than Matt Kemp was last year, and it didn't really enter into the MVP debate. Um, so another cool example that uh, the site can do is, um, so let's talk about Carl Crawford. You know, Carl Crawford had a off year last year um, after signing his big deal with Boston. Um, as a fan, I was interested to see if maybe that had something to do with him you know, going from Tampa Bay, which is a temperature-controlled environment in their dome, to 
Boston, which is outdoors in Fenway Park. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe the temperature had something to do with why Carl Crawford, you know, had a big dip in his production. So let's go to Adam's desk to see, uh, to see if that is the case. All right, so the first thing we can do is load Carl Crawford's page. And it's just going to give us his basic performance in 2011, um, lower than he's historically performed. But the natural question that arises, him playing in Boston, it's colder first part of the year, so we can condition on the temperature being between 30 and 60 degrees, uh, very quickly get, get his hitting data on that. And you can see his batting average drops to below 200. Um, so already that's a, that's a pretty big drop. Yeah, that's up there. Yeah, and so another question that might arise out of that is, you know, how many of those games with low temperatures were in Fenway Park? Um, so if we apply a home split to, you know, the 30 to 60 degree temperature split, you can see that most, or, you know, 75% of those at-bats were at Fenway Park. Um, and the interesting thing is that uh, most of those at-bats came in the first month or two of the season. Um, so as you can see, 173 there. Um, most of those at-bats came in the first two months of the season. Um, Carl Crawford is used to performing, you know, in the beginning of the season in a temperature-controlled environment. And when going to Fenway Park, you know, he got off to a slow start. You know, we're not saying it's because of temperature, but it's definitely something that should be considered and should be, you know, something that the average and, you know, fan should be able to look at and find data about. Um, you know, maybe because he got off to a rough start in April, uh, that, you know, translated, you know, throughout the rest of the season. And uh, I, I don't know anything about his mental makeup, but it's something that, you know, should be considered at least. And, you know, we're providing the ability for fans to look at data like that and to just, if they have any sort of hunch uh, about a player, uh, they can find data quickly and easily. So, yeah, there were the questions about yourself. Okay, so to reiterate, the purpose is not necessarily to present any uh, factual conclusions about like why causative relations between performance and different conditions, but to provide a really easy use platform for any fan to quickly and easily discover information about any player in every situation imaginable. And these were just a few of the variables that you can condition on. We think they, they were pretty interesting. Yeah, and by no means is that final. Um, it's just the demo we put together for uh, for the presentation, um, and we're looking to add a lot more splits and uh, also sabermetric data so fans can learn about cool stats like, you know, fielding independent pitching and weighted on base average and things like that. Okay, time for questions. And, yeah, yeah, we're ready to answer questions. You didn't have stolen bases up there as part of their overall value. Is, that, is there a reason that you don't, didn't include stolen bases, for example? Camp and Braun. Uh, there's there's no reason we just haven't added it yet. Uh, something we're looking to do next should be there in the near future. Hi. Yes. Um, it seems like you're leaving up uh, the room open for interpretation of the fan. Are you looking in the future to add maybe your own recommendation, maybe based on the splits, maybe maybe based on this result? Maybe you, uh, the team, write up their, their own summary or recommendation? Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, we definitely want to. You know, some fans don't like to go on and, you know, have their own ideas and apply splits and use a platform like this. Um, one of the things we definitely want to do is to show fans, you know, give fans data that we think is really interesting and just give it to them outright. And um, just present something that they can look at really easily in a unique and very easy to understand way for those who don't really want to go on that. So we definitely want to, you know, do some research and put something out, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, there's more. Yeah. Uh, we're using information from Retro Sheets. The question was, what's the source of our data? And so far, we're using Retro Sheets database. Thanks a lot. If you have any more questions, come and find us.